Hello, my dear leaders, and welcome! This week we're talking about William H. Johnson. William H. Johnson was born in 1901 to Henry Johnson and Alice Smut. Yeah, his mom's last name was Smut. That is such an amazing last name! How could you give up that last name in marriage? Going from Smut to Johnson. Oh, the patriarchy. But I digress. Let's move on. He was born in South Carolina and then moved to New York when he was 17. In New York, he worked a ton of odd jobs so that he could put himself through college and get an art degree. Not like I would know anything about having multiple jobs in order to get my degree. But all joking aside, our situations were completely different. When he went to college, black men wouldn't even be able to vote for another 40 years. At that point, he couldn't even use the same water fountains as all his white peers. So as much as I can joke about having to have a million jobs to go through college as well, it wasn't the same. Being a white passing woman means that I had a lot more opportunities to get jobs and different paying jobs than William would have had. So know that as much as my whole list of jobs was a lot, his list was longer and harder. But it's a really great thing that he actually went to art college because he has made some amazing pieces of artwork. After he got his degree in New York, Johnson went to France. He studied modernism and expressivism. Just look at how expressive those brush strokes are. They have a lot of energy and the colors blend and it makes you think of, I don't know, an expression of how he was feeling or what he was seeing. But when he got back to America, he chose to change his art style. These pictures are much more impressionistic. These pictures focus much more heavily on different parts of the essentials of art. More often than not, he uses simple lines, simple shapes, and very, very bright colors. While proportion might not be something that he was particularly interested in, he certainly gets the impression across. Using these lines and these bright colors really gets across the mood that he wants the viewer to see. Some describe it as a more folk style of art and feel. A lot of his art tells us about what it was like to live in his shoes or the shoes of people who were like him at that point in time. For example, this is one of his paintings called Soldiers in Training. He painted it in 1942 to depict all the black soldiers who were fighting in World War II. He wanted to make a commentary and to point out that all the black soldiers trained together and fought together, not even being allowed to fight with the white ones. Surrounded by the mountains and all of the blank land, it really does paint a picture of isolation, being set apart. Ultimately, it speaks to segregation, even when these people were putting their lives on the line. Or, on a happier note, you could take a look at Jitterbug. This is one of at least six different paintings that he did. All six of them called the Jitterbugs. The Jitterbug is a dance style that's accredited to Cab Calloway. Cab Calloway is a famous artist from the 1930s and 40s who sang Jump and Jive, Heidi 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 Ho, and of course, the Jitterbug. And Jitterbug music is almost always composed and played by black musicians. As the dance style gained popularity, it developed into other dance styles. These are Whitey's Lindy Hoppers, some of the greatest Lindy Hop performers of all time. Dances like the Jitterbug and Lindy Hop are still practiced and performed today. See if you can find a class in a city near you. I promise, it's a hoppin' good time. So now that you've seen a little bit of the Jitterbug, you can definitely see his inspiration. Having painted six of them, I'm guessing that he frequented the jazz clubs a lot. And with music and dancing like this, who wouldn't? All of Johnson's paintings have something in common. The lived experience of black folks in the 1940s. By painting these pictures, he was able to show everything from the spectacular to the mundane. Usually, though, he stuck to the daily life things. Training. Dancing. Music, baptism, traveling on a Sunday. All of these pictures are about daily life, about what they saw as they walked every day. These are the things he wanted people to see when they thought about the 1940s and about his friends and his family. And honestly, that begs the question. 
What do you want people to know about your life now, this year, this month, today? What does your daily life look like? What's important for people to know about it? Personally, I can't wait to see what you do for your everyday art. Who knows? Maybe about a hundred years from now, people will be looking at your art and seeing what it was like to live in your time as you and your friends and your family. And with that, I will leave you to make your next creation. As always, have fun and stay curious. Thank you.